Hey everybody, how's it going? I am uh, doing more work on the 250SX. It's looking pretty good right now. The camera around. Um, so I took it out uh, last week and the uh, it was running a little bit rough. I believe it was a rich condition from what I can tell. Um, I went after I came back home. After I came back home, um, I took the uh, carburetor out and took a, a look at it. Um, and I moved the needle, this needle right here. I put the clip back in the center and it was running more rich. So, um, yeah. So what I'm doing now is actually, so yeah, I was running more rich. So I had the clip all the way up top. Um, so it ran better when it was leaned out. Um, however, it was still running rich with the clip on the very top. So let me just put my camera. Okay. All right. Get some more light here. There we go. That's pretty good. So what I did was um, I wanted to inspect the whole carburetor. I did clean it beforehand, um, but I didn't have it fully disassembled. Like I didn't take the choke out. I didn't have all the jets taken out, and we'll get to those in a second. Um, let me tell you what I discovered, though. So in a carburetor, there's things that do kind of wear out. Um, one on this plenum, I don't know the exact definition for it, but there's a, a gasket right here at the bottom. And you can kind of see that that gasket is uh, eroded away pretty good. Um, and that's not good. We don't want that. I don't know if fuel is slipping past. It could have been um, contributing to the rich condition. Also, when you do, this goes right over here. And there is uh, some Torx bits that you have to use to get out. This is a T20. They're the security screws. So you have to have a T20 Torx with that um, hole drilled in the middle of it. So I, I took a look at that. So I already ordered a new kit and realized this one was in really, really bad shape. So I'm, I'm glad I took it apart this far. The other thing I took out today was the choke. Uh, I was doing some reading and learned that uh, you can, if this doesn't make a good enough seal, you can get fuel bypassing it, also contributing to a rich condition. I don't know if this is bad or not, um, but there is a little bit of a recess indentation on the rubber. So there is some potential that this is uh, not good anymore. And the third thing I'm looking at, let's say wear item, is the needle itself. Now if you look closely, the needle does have some ridges on it. Just be a little bit closer for you. It's going to be hard to focus. Well, you can kind of see there's some ridges, and my finger is catching on those ridges. My fingernail. Um, so what I did, I was watching another video. I love YouTube, man. Everybody's so helpful. So just so we're kind of oriented here, uh, this goes at the bottom, and the the needle does go into into this plenum here. So what's not supposed to happen, evidently, I have a new needle coming in the mail, same size. So we'll see. It's not supposed to fall all the way down to the bottom like that. And it's not supposed to shake. Um, and that is something I'll have to look into. But this needle is no good. So the hopefully the new needle will solve that problem. I was told to change that out. Uh, the slide itself, I was told it could have some wear on it, but this is this is like a metal steel. This is an aluminum body carburetor, so uh, however, this is the coating on it. There are some vertical striations on here that do indicate somewhere. Um, in this bottom left corner, uh, there's a bunch of wear there. So yeah, this thing probably has seen better days. Oh, it is dirty in there. Whew. Um, but yeah, 
that is uh, something uh, to think about as uh, you're doing your carburetor rebuild. Um, other things that I have done is uh, I did replace the, uh, whoop, there it is, this needle and um, the gasket up top. Oh, sorry, the gasket at the bowl, the gasket up top. Um, and I, not quite carburetor related, but I did put on a new throttle cable uh, itself because the old one was frayed and in bad shape. So when I'm online, um, I went to, well, let's talk about the jets here for a second. When I went online and I uh, did some research on the jetting, they have a, a calculator, online calculators you could use to determine which jet size. So basically you plug in the information about um, your stock jetting. Um, and then you put in, you know, the temperature you're going to be riding at and you put in the uh, elevation you'll be riding at and some calculators will give you a range. Um, there's one calculator I found that just tells you which altitude you're running the bike at, so they only give you one option. So it's hard to tell because this jet is in bad shape. I pulled it apart. It's got this crack on um, one side of it. And that crack, unfortunately, was right where the size was. So I did take a picture of it and do some zooming, but it looks like a 38, um, as far as I can tell. If it's not a 38, it's a 36. And so I'm not 100% sure. And this is the pilot jet. And the main jet is a it says AB165 so this is a 165 size uh, jet don't know if you could see it probably not so when I on the calculator it said I needed um, I think it was a 160 for my altitude that I'm at for the elevation I'm at and this 38 they said I should however it's weird so this 38 they said I should put in a 50, I think is what it was so we'll see I don't know so this is mostly for like the idle low speed circuit and this is like your high speed circuit the main jet so I don't know um, I, I don't know if this is the I'm going to guess this is not the stock jet um, but if it's not it, what appears to me could have happened is that the previous owner or one of the previous owners of the spike um, thought they were running rich, which they probably were. So to solve it, they just changed the jets inside here without making too much consideration of the condition of the needle, uh, the condition of the plunger, or the condition of the uh, float needle. So, and also the condition of the gasket on this plenum here. So there are several things to uh, take into consideration that's not so much related to jets initially. Um, these are in bad shape, so I'm going to replace them. Uh, the, my thought process is right now is I'm just going to go with the jetting that uh, is mentioned in the calculator, uh, what they recommend. Start there and uh, see how it runs. And with my suspicion being that... Um, there's multiple contributors here that are causing my carburetor to be rich. Um, so anyway, you know, next week the kit should be in the mail. I'll have this carburetor assembled and we'll do more testing on that. Um, the other thing I noticed is that the, the kit comes with the clip and the wash, this washer, this tiny washer and this little dime bag. So we got the needle clip that goes on here, a small washer and a small black O-ring. So I'm not really sure what those where those go. It almost it almost sounds like they go, you know, have something to do with this clip. And if you look in the slide, uh, you can't really see it, can you? Let's see if I can get a better angle. There we go. Stop shaking. Look in the slide. It is a little recess in there. 
right there. But there's no O-ring or clip, or I'm sorry, or washer that was on it when I pulled it apart. So I'm kind of wondering if that was missing um, and it's supposed to be on there. I don't know. So we'll figure that out. Um, so I, I bring this up to you if um, you're having some trouble determining why your bike is running rich and you've done all these things to it. Um, I think there's some other places you can start other than the jetting. And if you are not 100% sure, what I would do is take out your jets, read the numbers on them, and then plug those numbers into it that the, some online calculator and see what's, what's recommended and go from there. If you're running the correct size jets and you're still running rich, maybe start looking at some other things like these gaskets and the needle, the float and float heights, make sure that's set properly. Um, and yeah, the plunger for the choke, go from there. Uh, make sure you're not running old gas and I do recommend changing out the spark plug with a fresh spark plug when you're doing this test to give you the most accurate results. Uh, also, um, make sure the air screw um, is at the stock setting. So for this carburetor on this bike, it's one, it's just one full turn. There's half and there's one. So this is where I would start. And the thing is, make sure your bike is at operating temperature before you make any adjustments or draw any conclusions. If your engine is cold, um, I wouldn't take that, you know, those, how it's running too uh, seriously. Um, it, you might want to wait till the engine's warm before you start uh, making some judgment calls and some decisions. So just uh, some information I thought I'd share with you all. I'll, I guess the, I haven't tested it out yet to determine um, how this carburetor is going to run on the bike. So I uh, will get back to you all on that. I'm going to guess it's going to run fine once I have it completely rebuilt. So more to come. Enjoy your, enjoy your day.